live from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the Cube covering KubeCon and Cloud Native Con Europe 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage here in Copenhagen, Denmark for KubeCon 2018, part of the CNCF Cloud Native Compute Foundation, which is part of the Linux Foundation. I'm John Furrier, your host. We've got two great guests here. We've got Liz, Wright, the, Liz Rice, the co-chair of KubeCon and Cloud Native Con, kind of a dual naming because it's Kubernetes and it's Cloud Native, <laughs> uh, and also uh, technology evangelist of Aqua Security. Uh, she's co-chairing with Kelsey Hightower, who'll be on later today. CUBE alumni as well, and Jenna Kuo, who's a software engineer at Google. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Super excited, we, you know, we have a lot of energy, even though we've got interviews all day, and it's kind of, we're holding the line here, is that it's a, almost a celebration, but also not a celebration, because there's more work to do <laughs> with yeah. Kubernetes. Um, just the growth of the CNCF continues to hit some interesting good performance KPIs on, on its, its metrics. Uh, growth's up on the membership, um, satisfaction's high, Kubernetes is being called a de facto standard. Mm -hmm. So by all kind of general qualitative metrics and quantitative, it's doing well. It's doing great. But it's just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I talked yesterday a little bit in, in the keynote about project updates about how you know, Kubernetes has graduated. That's a real signal of maturity. It's a signal to the end user companies out there that you know, the, the risk you know, nothing is ever risk-free, but you know, Kubernetes is here to stay. It's stable. It's got a stable government governance model. You know, it's not going away. It's working. It's going to continue yeah. to evolve and improve, but it's really working. And we've got end users, you know, not only happy and using it, they're prepared to come to this conference and share their stories, share their learnings. It's brilliant. Yeah, and Janet, also, you know, you, you talk about China, we have an announcement that, uh, I don't know if it's formally announced, but Shanghai, is, is it, it is. out there announced It now? is, Okay, yep. so yep. Shanghai in, I think, November 14th, let me get the dates here, 14th and 15th in Shanghai, China, yeah. where it's going to be presented in either English or in Chinese, so it's going to be fully translated. Yeah, it, will, the update. it will be fully translated, and we'll have a CFP coming soon, and People will be submitting their talks in English, but they can choose to present either in English or Chinese. Can you help us get a Cube host that can translate the Cube for us? <laughs> <laughs> we need some, if you're out there watching, we need some hosts in China. Uh, but in all seriousness, this is a global framework, and this is, again, the theme of cloud native. You know, being uh, you know, my age, I've seen the lift and shift IT world go from awesome greatness to consolidation to VMwares. I've seen the waves. But this is a different phenomenon with cloud native. Take a minute to share your perspectives on the global phenomenon of cloud native. It's a global platform, it's not just IT, it's a global platform, the cloud, and what that brings to the table on, on, uh, for, for end users. I think for end users, if we're talking about consumers, it actually is, well, what it's doing is allowing businesses to develop applications more quickly to respond to their, their market needs more quickly. And end users are seeing that in more responsive applications, more responsive services, you know, uh, improved delivery of tech. Um, and uh, the businesses the too have engineers on the front lines now. Absolutely, and uh, there's a lot of work going on here, I think, to basically, uh, we were talking earlier about making technology boring. You know, the, this Kubernetes mm. level is, really an abstraction that most application developers don't really need to know about. And making their experience easier, you know, they can just write their code and it runs. So if it's yeah. invisible to the application developer, that's the success. That's, that's a really helpful thing. They shouldn't have to worry yeah. about where their code is that's running. That's DevOps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, the container and Kubernetes technology, all this cloud native technology that brings developer the ability to you know move fast and give them the agility to um, react to the business needs very quickly, and also users benefit from that. And operators also you know can uh, manage their applications much more easily. 
Yeah, when you have that abstraction layer, when you have that infrastructure as code, or even uh, this new abstraction layer, which is not just infrastructure, it's services, mm -hmm. microservices growth has been phenomenal. You're bringing the application developer into an efficiency and productivity mode where they're dictating the business model through software of the companies. So it's not just, hey, build me something and let's go sell it. They're on the front lines writing the business logic of, of businesses and their customers. So you're seeing it's super important for them to have that ability to either double down or, <laughs> or abandon quickly. And this, mm. is, this is what agile is. Now it's going from software to business. This to me, I think, is the highlight for me in this, on this show. You see the, the dots connecting where the developers are truly in charge of actually being in business impact mm -hmm. because they now have more capability. As you guys put this together and do the co-chair, do you and Kelsey, how do you, what do you guys do in the room, the secret room? You're like, well, let's do this on the content. I mean, <laughs> like, because there's so much to do. So, um, Tell, take us through that process. A little bit of insight into how that whole, uh, that whole process worked. So we had well over a thousand submissions, which, you know, there's no, I think there's like 150 slots, something like that. <laughs> so that's a pretty small percentage that we can actually accept. We had an amazing program committee. I think there were around 60 people who reviewed, in every individual reviewer looked at a subset. We didn't ask them to look at all thousand, that would be crazy. Um, they scored them, that gave us a, a kind of first pass, like a sort of an ability to say, well, anything that was below average, we can only take the top 15%. So anything that's below average is not going to make the cut. And then we could start looking at trying to balance. Um, so for example, there's been a lot of talk about um, uh, were there too many Istio talks? Well, there were a lot of Istio talks because there were a lot of Istio submissions. And that says to us that the community wants to talk about Istio. And then Number of Stars is the number one project on the new list. I mean, Kubeflow yeah. and Istio are Yeah, Kubeflow is another odd. great example. There are lots of submissions around it. We can't take them all, but we could use the the, the ratings and, and the advice from the program committee to try and assemble you know, the best talks to try and bring different voices in. You know, we want to have subject matter experts and new voices. We want to have the big name companies and startups. You know, uh, we wanted to try and get a mix, uh, you know, a diversity yeah. of opinion really. And you're a membership organization so you have to balance the membership needs with the content program. So challenging with given the growth. I mean, it must have, I can only imagine. Yeah, so you know. um, as program co-chairs, we actually have a really free hand over the content. So it's one of the really, I think, nice things about this conference. Um, you know, sponsors do get to stand on stage and, and deliver their message, but they don't get to influence the actual program. And the program is put together for the community. Um, and by doing things like looking at the number of submissions, uh, you know, using those signals that the community wants yeah. to talk about, I, I hope we can carry on giving well, that, the attendees that I would just, I would just say format. from an outsider perspective, I think yeah. that's something you want to preserve. Yes. Because if you look at the success of the CNCF, one thing I'm impressed by is they really allowed a commercial, commercial environment to be fostered and enabled, but they didn't compromise the technical. Yeah. And the content to me, content and technical tracks are super important because content, they all work together, right? So as right. long as there's no <laughs> meddling, <laughs> yes. say in your uh, swim lane, whatever, the, whatever it is, <laughs> content is really important. Absolutely. Because that's the learning. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what's on the cut list that you wish you could have put back on stage? Or is that too, too risque? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that. Yeah. <laughs> China, talk about China, because obviously um, we were super impressed last year uh, when we went to go visit Alibaba, just to the order of magnitude of the cultural mindset for their thinking around cloud native. And what I was most impressed with was um, Dr. Wong was talking about um, artistry. They just don't look at it as just technology, although they are nerdy and, and geeky like uh, us in Silicon Valley, but they really were thinking about the artistry because the app side of it has kind of a, not just design element to it, the user perspective. Um, and they're very mobile centric in China, so they're like, they were like, this is what we want to do. So they were very advanced in my mind on this. Does that change the program in China vis-a-vis -vis Seattle and here? Is there any stark differences? between Shanghai and Copenhagen and Seattle in terms of the program, 
Is there a certain focus? What's the insight I, into China? I think it's a little early to say because we haven't yet opened the CFP. Yeah. It'll, it'll be opening soon. Uh, but I'm fully expecting that there will be you know, some differences. I think the, you know, we're hoping to have speakers, a lot more speakers from yeah. China, from Asia, because it's local to them. So yeah. like here we try to um, have a, a European flavor. You'll see a lot of innovators from Europe, sure. like um, Spotify and the Financial Times, Monzo Bank, you know, they've all been yeah. able to share their stories with us. And I think, well, I'm hoping we'll get the same kind of thing in China, hear local stories yeah. as I well. I mean, that's a good call. I mean, I think the yeah. conferences that do the rinse and repeat from North America and just slap it down in different regions aren't as effective as making it localized in a way. Yeah. That's super important. I yeah. know that a lot of uh, China companies, they are pretty invested pretty heavily into Kubernetes and cloud native technology and they're very innovative. So I actually joined a project in 2015 and I've been collaborating with a lot of uh, Chinese uh, contributor from China uh, remotely on GitHub. For example, the uh, contributors from Huawei and they've been invested a lot in this. And they have some contributors in the core. Yeah, so we, we are expecting to see submissions from uh, both contributors and companies and users. Well, that's super exciting. We're looking forward to being there, um, and it should be excellent. Uh, always, a, always a fun time. The question that I want to ask you guys now, just to switch gears, is the, for the people watching who couldn't make it or might watch it on YouTube On Demand, who didn't make the trip, what surprised you here? What's new? I mean, obviously you have a, a view with Coach here, you've seen it, but was there anything that surprised you? Or did it go right, nothing goes perfect. I mean, it's like my wedding. Everything happens, you know, didn't happen the way you planned it. There's always a surprise. Any wild cards, any X factors, anything that stands out to you guys? So what I see from, um, so I've attend, I've, I think around five cons. So from the first one, it's only 550 people, only the small community, the contributors from Google and Red Hat and CoreOS. And growing from now, it, we are growing from the inner circle to the outside circle, from the co just contributors to also the users of it, like, and also the ecosystem, everyone that's building the technology around cloud native, and I see that growth and it's very surprising to me. And we have a, a keynote yesterday from CERN and everyone is talking about their keynote. Like they have, uh, I think, 200 clusters and that's amazing. And they said because of Kubernetes, they can just focus on physics. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that's a testimonial yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was really good stories to hear. And um, I think maybe one of the things that uh, surprises me, it sort of continued to surprise me, is how collaborative, th there's something about this um, kind of organization, this conference, this whole kind of movement, if you like, where companies are coming in and sharing their learnings. And we've seen that, you know, we've seen that a lot yeah. through the keynotes. Yeah. And I think we see it on the conference floor, we see it in the hallway track. And I think, you know, we see it in the the way that the different yeah. SIGs and working groups are, uh, and projects are all kind of collaborating on problem solving. And that's a really exciting well, thing that's to why see. Well, that's why I was saying earlier in the beginning that there's a celebration amongst ourselves and the community but also a realization that this is just the beginning. It's not, a, it's kind of like when you get venture funding if you're a startup, that's really when it begins. It's not, you don't celebrate, but you take a little bit of a pause. Now my personal take going to all the hundreds of events we do a year is that I think that this community here has fought the hard DevOps battle. Mm. If you go back to 20, 2008 time frame, and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, those years were, those were, those were hyperscale years. Look at Google, Facebook, all the original DevOps um, engineers. Yeah. They were eating glass and spitting nails. It was hard work. And it was really build your own, a lot of engineering, not just software development. So I think there's kind of like a camaraderie amongst the DevOps community saying, look at this is a really big step up function with Kubernetes because everyone's had some scar tissue. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. People, a lot of people have learned from previous, uh, you know, even other open source projects that they've worked on. And you see some of the um, 
the amazing work that goes into the kind of uh, like community governance side, the things yeah. that you know Paris Pittman does that mm -hmm. around contributor experience. It's it's so good to see people who are experts in helping developers engage, helping end users engage, really getting to There's a lot of common experiences role. for people who never met each other because there's people who have seen the hard work pay with, with scale and leverage benefits. They've seen it and wow, this is amazing. We had Cheryl from Google on saying, when I left Google and I went out in the real world, I'm like, oh my God, they don't actually use Borg? Like what? Like, <laughs> like, like what are they, how do they actually write software? Yeah. I mean, so she's a fish out of water and that, it's like, so again, I think there's a lot of commonality. It's a super opportunity, great opportunity and a great community and you guys have done a great job. Thank you. CNCF and uh, we hope we continue to nurture that, the principles and looking forward to China. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, we're here at the CNCF's KubeCon 2018. I'm John Furrier, more live coverage. Stay with us, day two of two days of CUBE coverage. Go to theCUBE.net, siliconangle.com for all the coverage. We'll be back, stay with us after this short break. <laughs>